here on the floor of the North American International Auto Show. We've run into Jeff Cly. He's the president of Continental North America. Jeff, great to run into you here. Great to see you everywhere around the shows, John. Yeah, all the shows, yeah. and you're right, because last week I saw you at CES. What's your first reaction? CES versus the Detroit show. What, what are some of the differences or the commonalities you Both see? Both great shows. A little bit focused on technology at CES, more on the vehicle here, but we see the convergence, certainly. Especially when you look at vehicles like the Dodge Ram that, that we're sitting in front of. Vehicles like this, you can see a convergence of not only the 12 inch display, which is getting more information, but all the safety technologies. And that was what I saw at CES was, it's not autonomous driving anymore is the big hype, it's how are we gonna do it? Mm -hmm. and how are we gonna communicate with the driver? And that was all the buzz around CES, and now we're seeing it in the vehicles here. And of course, Continental is gonna play roles in both those camps. We are, and that's a big part of our business is that human machine interface. How do we communicate with the driver? What are the technologies? We have some you know, uh, seamless connectivity from you know, getting the vehicle, uh, the driver into the vehicle, communicate with the driver, or even some of our uh, digital assistants we call them, Amazon Alexa, there's a whole bunch of new technology that is going to engage that driver and bring information into the car. How do you determine what you can bring in, how fast, I mean I know it's up to your customers as well and you're presenting them with all kinds of different ideas, but there's got to be a balance, right, so that you're not just overwhelmed with all this technology. There is, there is, and, and a lot, you're right, our customers really drive it, but we're bringing a lot of new ideas to them, especially things like 3D clusters. Now, you know, it's a, Explain, it's a, what do you mean by 3D so it's a, clusters? It's not a flat display that looks 3D, it's actually a curved display with sensor material on the entire curved display, and, and it allows you to rest your hands and give you that haptic feedback that a lot of times with flat displays you don't get. So we're finding different ways to communicate with the driver, and those are finding very quick adaptation in vehicles because they want to make sure that they're communicating. Ultimately, even heads-up display, we're seeing more of that now. And they got to find a way to communicate to the driver that the vehicle sees what you see as a driver, and it's okay to let go of the vehicle when it's in autonomous mode. Going back to the screens for just a moment here, you know, I, I love these things and they're great when you're sitting still. When I'm driving down the road, sometimes yeah. I'm poking the wrong part of the screen. Does your 3D screen help resolve it does. that? Exactly that, because it gives you resting places for your fingers, it gives you kind of that haptic feedback that you're looking for, and that's e even on the RAM here. Big display, but they also have the dials to go with it. So yeah. it's not just pure touch, because at the end of the day, you can't. it's a good balance of both. Well, exactly, because some people love the screen and they just want to touch it, others just want the knob, so it's great yep. to have both, although it does add some complexity. It does, but for a truck like the Ram, Sometimes they have gloves on, the touch isn't going to work. They want it to be robust. They, there's a certain owner that's looking for that in this vehicle, so it's a good balance. Okay, you've been at both shows. For our viewers here, what would you say, here's something you ought to keep an eye on. This is going to go places. I, I think really it's it's the, the future of heads-up display and the communication with the driver mm -hmm. and, and, and how you bring that information to the vehicle, whether it's heads-up display, even some of the, the curved glass displays that we have and the ability to move content in and out of each display, that's really the future, and it's, it's becoming easier and easier to do that. Okay, one more follow-up with the head-up display then. You know, most of them are pretty simple yeah. right now. You know, speed, maybe turn indicators, a few things. What else are we going to see? So what you're going to start to see is larger, larger field of depth as well, or deeper depth. And what you're going to start to see is where it will show you what the vehicle sees. It will show you pedestrians walking. It will show you what their intent is and so that you begin to get confidence in what the vehicle's doing. And, and also, what you're gonna to start to see is how are you communicating with that, that pedestrian, for example. With, with adaptive front lighting, not, not just be, being moved, but with LED, if you see a pedestrian and you can see that they're not looking up, they're looking down because of cameras, you can shoot a beam of light to them to flash them and say, hey, I see you, right? You need to pay attention. So this whole engagement is starting to become more and more a big issue Again, enabling autonomous driving. And how soon might why, might we see these things? In the next, you know, two, three, four years, depending on the applications. Obviously, you know, a lot of them you're going to start to see in 2019 and 2020 with you know smaller field applications. But you know, big mainstream, it's going to come with the highly automated driving in the 2025 timeframe. Real good, exciting things to look forward to. Yeah. Jeff Clyde, thanks so much for your time John, today. John, thank you as well. Yeah.